So now what we're going to do is we're going to prove that a function is in fact on two. Okay. So we're going to start out with this definition. So a function f from a to b is called onto or a surjection. If and only if for every element b belonging to b, there's an element a belonging to a with f of a equal to b. Okay. And we talked a little bit about what that means. That means that basically that our range is the entirety of our codomain. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to let b be an element of the codomain, right? Any element of the codomain. So it's going to be arbitrary. That actually allows us to make a statement that every value b is going to do this. Then we're going to set f of a equal to b. So our function f of a equal to b. Then we'll use some algebra to solve for a. And then finally, we'll make an argument that b is in fact an element of the domain. Excuse me. And that should be in fact that a is an element of the domain. So let's take a look at an example. All right. And we'll work through this. So let's take, for example, we've got f r into r. And we'll define f of x is equal to 3x plus 1, that example that we used earlier, this linear one. Okay, now what we're going to do first is I'm going to let b belong to r. Here's the codomain. Okay, so b belongs to r. Therefore, and we'll let f of a equal to b. Okay, so that means 3a plus 1 equals b. All right, now 3a plus 1 equals b implies that 3a equals b minus 1, and that a equals b minus 1 divided by 3. Okay, now a couple things that we want to get here. Since we aren't square rooting, basically the restrictions that we would have inside of the real numbers, pretty much. I mean, like we're not taking the natural log of anything either. That's another one that actually would be kind of problematic for us. Since we aren't square rooting or dividing by 0, um, that means that a belongs to R. So consequently, we choose an arbitrary B, we get out an A, this means so F is on two. And that is actually it, right? So we're going to set it up, we're going to say let F of A equal some B, an arbitrary value, then we'll, we'll basically plug in A and B into our function, solve for A, and then make an argument that a has to in fact be a member of r and so consequently pick any element of b you're going to get back to an element of a and r all right and that actually tells us that this is in fact an onto function okay let's take a look at another example let's take a look at f of x equals x squared we're going to take uh, in fact we'll take f r to r all right and then we're going to find it f of x equals x squared now in this case, we do know, in fact, that if, right, um, f of x equals negative 1, right, there is no such x belonging to the real numbers that will have x squared equal to negative 1. So f is not on 2. But we can also look at and use the definition in order to kind of help the, help us out with this. So if we let b belong to the real numbers, okay, and let f of a equal b, then what we have is a squared equals b, right? And so that would be a squared equal to b. a would equal plus or minus the square root of b, but if b is less than zero, then a does not belong to r. So again, we get f is not onto. Right? And that's basically saying, okay, well, we had that same issue that we had before, right? If I pick a certain b belonging to r, okay, and we said let b belong to any any and r, if I chose the right b, in this case, negative 1, negative 5, any negative number, I'm going to get a not belonging to r, so consequently this is not in fact on 2. There we go. Another problem. Okay. Let's take a look at one more example, um, one that you may not be thinking about, but that actually is really important. Let's take, for example, we're going to take f r into r, okay, and we'll define f of x as equal to e to the x. 
Okay, so that's the exponential, right, raised to a power. Okay, and I'm going to draw a picture of it so you can kind of get a sense of what it looks like in case you've forgotten. That's basically that. That's my exponential. And what we know is that as x gets uh, x gets negative, okay, um, and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger negative, what we get is, is that e to the x or f gets closer and closer and closer and closer to zero. All right. What e to the x never is, is e to the x is never negative, right? And so remember our codomain r, okay, our codomain r is in fact, mm, is the group that we're picking from, right? That's going to be picking our b's. Yes. Well, that's a little problematic. That's going to be a little problematic. Let's actually take a look at that when we try and, and prove. We're going to let b belong to r, okay? And we'll let f of a equal to b, okay? So that means e to the a is going to equal b. Now, if you remember, what we need to do in order to isolate a is we're going to take the natural log of both sides. All right? And so this gives me a natural log e is equal to the natural log of b. All right? And a equals natural log of b. Well, now we have a problem. The problem here is this, is, is that for a to be defined, so if b is in fact less than 0, then no such a exists. Hence, f is not onto. Now, if I were to restrict the domains, or restrict the domain in this case, let's say, for example, I take f r into just r, the positives, all the positive values, that is not even including 0, then what I actually, in fact, have is an onto function. e becomes onto because the only values that I could choose for b's are all non-negative, right? So in this case, when I go back to look at this, I see, oh, wait. Well, before, the problem was that a, to be defined, b had to be greater than zero, right? Because natural log of b is undefined when it's b is zero or lower, right? Well, in this case, the values that I'm picking for b are only positive, and so consequently, I get a value for a every single time, all right? And so that's how we prove that something is, in fact, on two, and that kind of helps us to kind of think through what it means to be on two, okay? So just as a quick review, right, to prove that a function is on two, we let b be an element of the codomain. It's an arbitrary element. Then we set f of a equal to b. And I say that by saying let f of a equal b. Then we solve for a using some algebra, and we make an argument that a is, in fact, an element of the domain. If a is not an element of the domain, then we don't have an onto function. Right? And that 